Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Midget Gems Podcast. Come. Oh, come in, uh, Private. Uh, Corporal, sir. Corporal, yes. Come in, Corporal. Uh, uh, Stephen, sir. Stevens, this is good. Uh, well, uh, ha- have a seat there, sir. Uh, uh, now you're here for the uh... the court martial, sir. Ah, yes, splendid, good show, Benson. Stephen, sir. Yes. Well, now let me see. Uh, what are you here for then, Hawkins? Stephen, sir. Well, it's all in the report, sir. Uh, what report? In front of you, sir. I can see that man. Don't get lippy with me. I can have you thrown out of the army for that sort of thing. Now, why are you here? I, I ran away, sir. Ran away? Yes, sir. From the army? Not our army, sir. No. From the enemy, eh? Hmm. Yes, sir. It's all in the report, sir. Which enemy? The uh, Taliban, sir. I can't say I blame you entirely. No, sir. It's very scary. Ah, uh, well, now then, now, uh, what do you want me to do about it? Well, sir, I'd like a pardon. Pardon? Yes, sir, I'd like a pardon. On what grounds? For, for being scared, sir. Cowardice, eh? No, sir, just being scared. There were hundreds of them. So you didn't want to be shot, then? No, sir, that's why I ran away. Ah, yes, I see. Well, well Johnson, if we make an exception in your case, the, the rest of the men... Might uh, get ideas. Rest of the men, sir? Yes. But. What? I was the only one there, sir. Uh, really? Well, uh, well done. Um, would you like a medal or something? Oh, yes, please, sir. Jolly good show. Good day, this is Australian News Today. Well, first up, we're a bit annoyed about the cricket. In other news, Blake's been bitten by a bloody shark up in Woolabonga, which is a bit of a surprise. Because it's a sheep station. Please say it could have been a dingo. They're going to investigate and report in the morning. As soon as I've had a few more beers. Welcome to number 10, where I'm delighted to be presenting my farewell edition of the Earl Grey Wishful Test. And, you know, after an argument with Cherie, I have decided that the time has indeed come to get out the old Fender Stratocaster and, you know, push for reform of the band. And not only that, but to fulfil the hopes and dreams and ambitions of all our young people everywhere, excluding my own and make wicked music once again, man. So that my legacy to the nation will go down in history, not so much for my role in Iraq, but rather for my Iraq in role, baby, if you see what I mean. So, you know, take that and stick it up your Westlife, so that when people ask me what I'm going to do in the future, I'll be able to say amphetamines. Thank you. slightly disturbing scenes as we go undercover to investigate the cheating of old age pensioners. Hello. 
Mr. Robertson? Yes. Hello there, sir. You all right? Yes. Excellent, excellent. Just a quick call. My name, sir, and I'm calling from Scabby Air Arsenal about the security of your bank account. My bank account? That's right, sir. I don't have a bank account. Oh. I keep it all under the mattress. Oh. I'm 92, you know. Oh, well, as I said, my name's sir, and I'm calling from inside your mattress. Oh, yes. What's that about, then? Well, it's about security, sir. Oh. Uh, yes, sir. I'm a bit worried that having so much cash in your mattress, well, it doesn't really make for an easy night's sleep, does it? You're sleeping on top of how much was it? Twenty-eight thousand. Twenty-eight grand, really. Your life savings, is it? Yes. Oh, uh, well, well, I just wondered if you'd mind if I pop round sometime soon to speak to you about it, uh, maybe this afternoon? No, I can't this afternoon. I've got to go and sign for statutory maternity pay. And job seekers allowance. Heavenly checking number ninety seven, please. Welcome to heaven, heaven sir. sir. What did you do with your life? Well, well I, I, I invented the internet. Okay, well, just hang on a wee while, will you? Let me just check with the boss. Look at a wee fella here. He says he's invented the internet. Shall I let him in or what? <clears throat> uh, is there some kind of problem? No, no, he's just having a wee look now. Now? <laughs> the end of the world is now. <laughs> That's not very funny. Sorry. <laughs> look, I'm afraid he can't get you up on the screen at the minute. Why oh, you have not? D don't you have broadband? Are you just kidding? We only have the narrow way up here. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Look, son, you're going to have to go down there. Down there? I don't want to go down there. Why? Sorry, system's crashed. Drab banal with that report there. And so to our main headline, and the government have revealed today that there is the threat of danger. So how worried should we be? With me in the studio is Professor Frankly Ratherdell of the government think tank. Uh, Professor, frankly, rather dull, how worried should we be? Good evening. Um, well, not as worried as you suggest, frankly. So, how worried, in fact? Well, it's not as dangerous as, say, a savage tribe of highly contagious cannibals led by George W. Bush having a bonfire party in a dynamite factory teetering on a crumbling tri cliff top in 1920s Chicago. Yes, but surely uh, a warning such as this from the government must be taken seriously. Well, the threat of danger can, of course, mean a dangerous threat, or it could simply mean that the government are worried. Forgive me, Professor, but the public surely have a right to know the extent to which they should be worrying. Indeed, and I am trying to tell you that in this particular instance the worry should not be as significant as, say, one's football team going into administration yes. as one stares forlornly at one's overdrawn bank statements through the narrow gap in the jumbo jet door, yes, as the yes, cabin yes, stewards yes. are serving fox stew to I one's fellow that. passengers, who happen to be all animal right. rights yes, protesters. Yes, all right. So let me get this straight. You are saying that we shouldn't worry very much at all, even though the government are saying we should. Not at all. I'm saying we should be alert to the threat of danger, but not worrying. So, in fact, you're saying, you, the government think tank, you're flying in the face of government advice and saying we shouldn't worry at all. Exactly. I mean, it's not as though the public are faced with an invasion of rabid locusts intent on stealing their pension funds, only to squander right. it all on yes. tat. Yes. As a responsible organisation, we have to keep a sense of perspective about this, Professor. As you know, we are often accused of bias, so when the government say we ought to be worried, it's our job to invite guests such as yourself to explain how worried we should be. Surely you can understand that. But the government have not said we should be worried. They have merely pointed out the threat of danger. So that's it, then. You don't agree with the government whose tank you think in? No, I can't speak for the government, but I can tell you that I would only be worried if the threat of danger were proved to be as worrisome as, say, Bin Laden getting a job right. at McDonald's and serving up an unwashed salad yes. with traces of raw egg that have been laid by a genetically modified very, very hen. Nice. Purchased with rubles yes, yes. stolen from the map. Yes, all right. No. Professor, I have to stop you there. Thank you. 
Now to our next item. According to US scientists, there are only enough oil reserves to last one week. Good day, obsessives. I'm Alex Tweezer, the people pleaser, and over the next five days, I'm going to be giving helpful handy hints on everything from washing the car to cleaning the dashboard and avoiding getting those grease spots on the brick drive. Now I've had a letter here from Mrs Betty Rich of Upper Gates in Sydney and she wants to know how to stop dust accumulating on her wheel arches. Well I'm not an expert but Betty, if you don't take it out of the garage you won't have the problem. But if it does get dusty, hose it, hose it, hose it. This is St. Freddy's house. It's where unwanted rock stars are admitted for recycling their wasted lives. Bobby Brilliant used to have it all. Record deals that would make Rolf Harris wobble. A gold-plated pill dispenser. And adoring fans. But years of abuse have taken their toll and the fans have stopped buying the tickets, unable to remortgage. Leaving Bobby without the use of one of his faces and wondering how he will cope in the future with just the two. <laughs> okay. You're tuned to Capital Continental. RKPMZ LRMS 707 4892.302 For the next five hours, we'll be taking your calls on your relationship difficulties. And with me in the studio is Dr. Judith Hormone. Welcome, Doctor. Good evening, Byron. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. We've got... Uh, Phil here on line one. Good evening, Phil. Yeah, man, this is Phil. Okay, Phil, uh, do you want to talk to the good doctor? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, uh, well, th my problem is this. My, my wife is down, and, and I just can't see the lifter. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Philip, this is what you have to do. Your wife is probably feeling very emotional at this stage, and she needs to show, or be shown, a little consideration and a little bit of tender care. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, sure, Doc, but, but is that going to help me get her into the trunk or what? <laughs> so, Mr. Presley. Ho, ho, ho. Not actually dead then, eh? Uh -huh. Uh -huh -huh -huh. I can usually tell uh -huh. that in your case, I had to check the uh, dental records. Uh -huh. You'll understand about records, I expect. <laughs> uh -huh -huh -huh. Now, undisputed key of rock and roll, I understand. Uh -huh -huh -huh. Good. Uh -huh. You'll be needing a gold crown then. <laughs> Hold still. Uh -huh. I, uh, I, I went to see Gracelands with the missus, actually. I uh, uh -huh. didn't like the look of the pluck, though. <laughs> Nearly done. Uh -huh. You may have to go easy on the cakes for a while. Uh -huh. Okay, I think you can rinse out now. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. You have been listening to the first Midget Gems podcast. All sketches written and recorded by Hill Jennings and some of the music and effects courtesy of GarageBand. If you enjoyed it, tell someone at the BBC!